First up is public comment. This is anything that's not on the agenda. Seeing nothing. We'll move to approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Consent calendar, meeting minutes and warrants. I had a question about that actually. Um, it says under for our draft minutes, um, under 5i, we, it doesn't say that we approve the bid, but didn't we approve the bid at the last meeting? Yes. Yep. So it's not. But recorded. we gave them the flexibility to add more to it. Yeah, it's just not in the minutes. Yep. I don't know if that matters or not. Couldn't hurt to tell to go back and make sure we get that full language there. Just in case. Okay. We'll bring it to you next time. Move that in. So you want to do the consent calendar with just the warrants? Uh, I motion to approve the consent calendar with just the warrants. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. First up is the preservation easement discussion with representatives of the grant entities. We've got a few. Are you with one of the. Anybody from BHCBU? I'm here. So here's the, my name is Elizabeth Egan. Thank you for meeting with us tonight. I apologize. I'm working. I'm facing, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Great. Sorry. My video is unstable right now, so I apologize, but I'm here. Meg has indicated she cannot join, and Karen is going to try to join. But I'm here and I'll answer as many of your questions as I can. Elizabeth, can you just walk us through why the easement is required? Sure. In the brain? <laughs> sure, I'd be happy to. So the easement is a legal document which gives us an interest in the property to ensure that the historic elements that are set forth in that legal document are protected. It secures the state's investment in this project. Um, there, it doesn't limit everything you can do, but I would be remiss if I did not say it is a legal document. It is recorded in the land records. It runs with the property and it does restrict what you could do with regards to the historic elements. You would need to ask permission to change those elements and they would need to be done in conjunction and in concert with the National Historic Standards. Does that answer your question? So the funds are investing in just the cupola on the building, correct? The funds, our funds are being used for that, but our funds are being awarded to preserve the building. And I can tell you the exterior, there are certain exterior features that this document would protect. There are significant interior features and then the setting. But the so, grant itself is just funding the cupola. Our funding, as I understand it at this point, is just going for the cupola. And the Paul Brun funds are going for another element. And so in here, like in practice, how does that work? The town, so the town has a capital program. We have a certain dollar value that's set aside for all the town buildings. What happens if you decide something ought to happen to that building and the town hasn't funded it in our capital budget? So um, in terms of when you mean what if something happens that we want done, the scope of work that you've presented to VHCB is the cupola. If you ran into issues paying for that, for example, with all the flooding that's been going on, 
these days, budgets are stretched very thin. We would work with you. We're not going to come to you and require that and or demand that you do something. It's usually the opposite. You come to us and say, we want to replace the windows. And at that point in time, this is just an example. The windows would be viewed as, are they a historic element? And can they be replaced with final windows? Or do they need to be replaced with a historically accurate window to maintain the historic significance of this building? It's not a case of us coming to you demanding work be done. It's more you coming to us saying, we finished the cupola, we've done these other maintenance items. We now want to do something that is affecting, like I used as an example, the windows. And that would be something that Meg Campbell from Preservation Trust of Vermont would work with you to see that it was done in concert with the historic standards, the preservation standards. So you're saying basically that your easement is only so if any work is done on the building, it's done in conformance with those standards, right? That's, but that's so cool. we, there's a paragraph in here that talks about that we agree at all times to maintain significant features mm -hmm. in a reasonably good and sound state of repair, yada, 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 which is very oh. subjective, right? What that actually is. Like, so what happens if, if the library staff decides that it's not in a good state of repair, but the select board says it is? Where do, And you have an easement that says a subjective piece, right? Good state of repair. How does that all play out? What I'm trying to figure out is we have a limited understand. amount of funding. Can is this easement a document that can be used to try to strong arm the select board into funding something on that building that's not part of our capital program that year? So we're never going to strong arm you because our relationship is with the town and the library but we're not if the library were to come to you the trustees and say we want to do this maintenance feature you're the owners of the property you are the people that we have the contractual relationship with if it is something that is essential the roof is falling in and you'll have to pardon me i'm just the lawyer so i don't look at the physical elements of the building. So I'm going to sound ignorant right now. I'm not sure if the roof is a slate roof or not, but if it is a slate roof. So if the roof were caving in and the roof needed to be replaced and the town said, we don't have the money to do it, that is a maintenance item that we would work with you to try to see if there's other funding out there. We can't force you to do it, but it would it would have detrimental effects, not for the historic preservation easement or our trying to force you to fix it, but more importantly, for an important building for the town. Are you open to us coming in with some better language for that than what's there to kind of express that? I'm open to looking at it. Um, I'm always open if you have your council or your, if you members of the select board want to send us language, I'm always open to suggestions and ideas as long as it doesn't denigrate the integrity of the document. I hear what you're saying. We've been down this road with the town before on another project. I respect the fact that towns have budgets, towns have financial constraints, and you don't want to put yourself in a position that is going to hamstring you, for lack of a better word. Am I correct? Yep, that's exactly it. 
Okay. I, I understand and respect that. I'm happy to look at the language and also run it by our partners at Preservation Trust of Vermont. Okay. There was even a note of maintaining mature trees. So what happens if the tree <clears throat> starts falling in? Do we have to then replace that with another mature tree? How would we even do that? That sort of stuff. That, sure that was like, see. Um, um, oh, the perimeter garden areas and mature yeah. trees. Yeah, we I don't know. expect you. We don't expect you to oh, replace mature trees. I understand completely that. You're not going to put another tree up that's of the same size. It's to try to maintain the setting to the degree that you can. If there are certain concepts here under the setting that cause you concern, um, send me an email. These are these come these elements, the exterior features, the significant interior features, and the setting elements. Those come from Preservation Trust of Vermont and the consultant that reviews all of the historic properties to let us know what exactly those elements are. Karen Freeman, I believe, is on now, too, and she may or may not be able to chime in, but I think Karen would tell you that we are open to hearing your concerns and we're open to hearing what potential revisions you might want. Whether we can, in the end, agree to them, until I see them, I can't, and until our partners weigh in, but I'm always going to be open to what the town concerns are. That's fair, we can put those together. Okay, that's fine. This doesn't, I, I know that there's time limits, but we're not going to decommit this award until if and when the town comes to us and says, we don't want to do this, period. At that point in time, we would ask that you put in writing to us that we would decommit the award. But until then, there is not... There are rough time frames worked out, but we're going to work with you to see this hopefully through closing. Okay, that's helpful. Anybody have any other questions? On so, that Those were so where my concerns were. Well, yeah, so just so they, the, hi, this is Robin Goodall. I'm the chair of the Library Board of Trustees. And I just, I as we go back to talk about this as well, the, the work on the cupola is not in question, but in terms of the easement, it would be if there were other things that came up that we wanted to do following the completion of this work, we and the town would need to consult with you. Is that correct? On certain elements, yes. Okay. So things that have to do with the appearance of the outside or features of the inside, like we have this amazing fireplace um, inside the building. So if there was something that would change that substantially, we would need to talk with you about that. That is correct. Okay. Any other questions on that? Do, are there other, we have other board members here. Do y'all have other questions? I, mean, I, I, have, I will say just one moment. If, if tonight, once you leave the meeting tonight, you have other questions, Trevor has my email. Trevor has my phone number. I am open to, if somebody thinks of something when the meeting's done, you're more than welcome to email me and we'll work with you. I'm sorry if I interrupted someone. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, I'll just comment. Uh, my name is Ed Rooney. I'm a, a library trustee as well. Um, you know, the library is uh, registered with the National Register of Historic Places, and I don't think that um, there's much difference between the two in, in terms of any work we would want to do would have to conform to those standards, and I think they're essentially the same. You are correct. So we're sort of already under those same guidelines. It's more the budget impact. You know, the town owns multiple buildings. They all have needs. There's only a limited amount of money. 
they should be going through a prioritization model so they all get taken care of in the order of priority. So it's that whole is this document going to be able to be used to put the library first all the time to get the money that's available so the other buildings suffer. Our job is to balance all the building needs. That's what we're concerned about. That's what I'm concerned about. I hear your concern. It's and it's we definitely are not trying to strong arm you to put the library first. And so send the language that you think would allay some of those concerns and we can see what we can do from there. Yep, we'll take care of that. Okay. Katie, we would be happy to help Amy. Um, I'm Amy Brassman, I'm the library director. I want to point out that in addition to the easement attached to the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board grant, we have two additional grants that have um, preservation easement requirements. The Paul Broon grant, which the Preservation Trust, there is a grant for the National Park Service, and also the National Park Service itself, the Saving American Treasures grant. So we're I guess what I'm getting at is for a preservation project, it is not at all unusual that the grant will require a useful preservation easement. That's correct. And the Paul Brune Awards language that would be required in another legal document has been built into this document so that you've met the requirements of the Paul Brune funding with this document. Thanks. All right, we'll get some language together and send it up to you. Okay. And like I said, if there's any other questions, please feel free to reach out. Yep, we will. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. You too. Uh, up next is RACDC request for a public hearing. I'm Diane Elliott. Oh, yeah. I'm here from RACDC. Okay. Do you want to present what it is your um sure what okay. the public hearing is? um so we went up before the vcdp board in june um and we were deferred to their november meeting um following that meeting we were awarded um vchb money as well as vhfa money um so we are very hopeful that going back to the vcdp in june will be successful. Um, in order to meet the application requirements for that um, board meeting, we have to, in conjunction with the town, hold a public hearing. Okay. So we're coming before you today to agree to a public hearing at the September board meeting. That would be the standard. Yeah. Standard board meeting. Okay. Anybody have any problems with that? Second Thursday. I'm sorry, 912. Okay, good. <laughs> this is not the first Thursday, is it? Yes. Seven. You would type it in your manager. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. 912. <laughs> any concerns with adding that to the September meeting? No. I don't think so. Anybody online? <laughs> All right. Uh, do, we, motion. Yeah. do we need a vote to, to hold that? You Good just want it? Yeah. Okay. So I'll make a motion to add that to our September 12th meeting. 2024, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. We'll stipulate. It's this year. Now that we know exactly what's going to happen, I'll second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Allocation of water wastewater for 32 North Main. 89 gallons per day of both water, well, I guess each of water and wastewater for 32 North Main. That's the Bethany Church. We have plenty of capacity on both ends. We've got a little action item uh, memo from Chris that lays it out. We talked to the chair of the Water Wastewater Committee. Everybody's in agreement that this one fairly easy access. So I motion to approve that request. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
post. Town clerk, town treasurer, vacancy update. Candidate, who will be with you tonight for any of you? Are we an executive session? An executive session. Yep. Okay. We can handle that. Justin Poulin, Lincoln Avenue by request. You want me to address you here? Or? Yep. <clears throat> um, so I, I just trying to get that out of the hearsay loop and rumor loop and understand what the town's scope might be. I have adjacent property to portions of Lincoln Avenue and I believe it's maybe East Street that goes, no, Haven Street and Arlington Drive. <clears throat> so I met with the river, State River Corridor for our um, gentleman, Aaron, uh, Jaron Board. I think I'm saying his name right. And he, uh, he didn't say the town had intentions, but he mentioned there might be some intentions. And then I've heard some talk from um, Tucker's Quarry that the town had been looking into um, getting you know, riprap to do some work. And then also uh, John Shangra reached out to me last fall um, asking if I would you know, allow access through my property to do some work. And he didn't really elaborate on what the scope of the work would be. So I don't really know. I have just, you know, innuendos and rumors. So I don't, I'm just trying to get a better understanding what the town's future goals might be or, or, or and I, I think um, Mead Vinhammer actually reached out to Trevor a week or so ago and because um, they have the Vermont Land Trust as an easement on our property. And uh, anything that happens or I do in that area, I have to approve for the, to them, get approval from them. And so I was talking to them about what I wanted to do. And I was mentioning, and um, I said, I don't really understand. I don't know what's proposed or if anything's proposed. I just know there's these rumors that I've heard. So I'm just trying to get a better sense. Of, there's nothing proposed on your land. Okay, but I'm not sure if the town understands that. So that the, the big bank, <coughs> my property actually goes to the opposite. It's very specific in our survey. It says mm -hmm. to the top of the bank on the opposite side of the river. Yep. We're not on that side of the no, bank even. opposite side. So yep. We're not on that side of the river, on that part of the bend. Our issue is right at the end of Lincoln Avenue. Okay, it's an outlet. You, didn't you guys acquire the house no. at the end of Lincoln Avenue from FEMA? No. no. You haven't acquired that yet? No. Okay. And what about like on Heath or what did I say, Haven Street? No. We're just looking at an outlet pipe okay. coming out at the end of Lincoln Avenue. And that's, that's what it. I, that's kind of what I think Trevor cleared up with, with mm -hmm. uh, me. Yep. But I'm just trying to dispel all these other things that I've heard. And... And I, you know, I didn't know why John would want access to do that if, from through my property. So that just the call that I got from him, and then last fall, and then some of the other things I've heard this spring. He was there was a they were looking at a path to get rock in, to do the bottom of that where the pipe comes down. That's probably what he was looking for. Okay. To take some material in that I, way. He, and I met and misunderstood him. It was just a phone call. I was out in the Hayfield. I thought he was talking about the big bang. Um, is it Haven Street or yeah. Arlington Drive? The address is the end of Arlington. Yeah, the right I thought it might be that yep. big bang. That's kind of what I interpreted it to be. But I mean, that's just, so just trying to get a clear. The, the only project that we have approved right now with FEMA is that. There is a conversation about whether we could get any mitigation money to study the bank around that outlet. Right, and, yeah, that's and look at thing. that, but that's the other side. Yeah, that's well. I mean, so we have a pin, you know, where the house is yeah. <laughs> that's been, I think it's been abandoned. So we actually own a section of that field mm -hmm. in there um, on the op opposite side from us. And that won't be a town project if the if the Langevin property gets bought out right now, the state will be taking the lead on that, they would be owning it. They would be taking the lead on it. Who owns it in the end? I don't know. But oh, okay. that's a state yeah. project I'm at this point. Now. 
Yep. 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 How many tractors can run like Yep. Um, so That's not nothing's it. been done with the land in their property? No. They've done yeah. some, a little bit of looking into it, but that's all tied all right. up in the FEMA process. Okay. With the state. All right. Yep. And it got muddier in some of the process stuff. So nobody's, we're waiting for some answers to you to see liability based on what turned up in a title search, for example. So. In regards to the land demand property. Right. So it's yeah. uncertain what happens next. We're just waiting right. for answers. <laughs> yep. But right now, there's no construction <coughs> project on that side. Okay. All right. So that's all. You're that good. was my all my questions. Okay. You know how rumors. Oh, I love them. <laughs> thank you. Thank um, you very much. Next up is discussion on the town charter continuation. Still working on it. Still on it. Okay. Um, manager's report. Uh, August twenty second through the twenty eighth are the projected dates for paving. Just so you have a firmer deadline, which I'll let folks know exactly what, when to the extent we can. Uh, met with FEMA again today. We're going to try to spend a day tomorrow getting a certain number of projects in the obligation queue. This was recommended to us by them in the state in large part because when you enter the queue will determine when the funding finally unlocks. This is all tied up in what Congress can or can't get done. <laughs> so I would lower expectations <laughs> accordingly, um, just given how there hasn't been a lot of permanent budget in not in many federal fiscal years. Um, so we'll see what shakes out. But it puts us in line for that funding to flow um, once it is available. So we'll try to get the projects that are by and large that are complete or that there's some kind of pathway for and where we have some sense of what happens next. And we asked a whole bunch about different process elements and what happens if final prices come back more than that. So um, we're working on that. And then the last one is the, the apple tree. Never talked about a specific tree with any board anywhere else I've been, so thank you for another first. <laughs> Always. Um, were you involved in that when it all went down? Did, didn't the town give an opportunity for people to come and grow more off it? Didn't they do a whole bunch of... I think there's... I think our little apple tree has baby apple trees out there in different stages and of know, life. I know at least one. And that was supposed to happen so that the next time it was on the verge, it was gone. That was my understanding of, of how that all was. The common consensus after half of it essentially fell and is gone now is that the amount of rock, the structure of the tree that's left, isn't anything that can be saved. It's best sort of served by taking it down. Based on the timing, depending on where Debbie hits the amount of rain and the pull of apples, it may take care of itself even. The rock <laughs> is sort of at that spot. Um, but, so we've talked to the tree wardens, talked to the tree service. Uh, it seems to be there's alignment on what action is next as opposed to trying to do something more elaborate to save. And you can even see it by looking at it. I mean, the bottom, what, four feet were like a barrel. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I think it's lived its life. If Debbie doesn't take it down, we should before something else happens. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what everybody the time has, has come. Yeah. Everybody has deferred to <laughs> to you four, Louis five, and myself, so that if something goes sideways, <laughs> <laughs> things just blame on Scott. Yeah. Well. <laughs> well, I think it's. <laughs> I know at the last one there was a bunch of people that were coming in to get <coughs> to start new ones off it and graft it or whatever they were doing. And that was supposed to be the that was the solution at the time and then when it, the next time it was done. How many years ago was this? <coughs> oh dear. <coughs> I bet it was twenty. Wow. I bet it was. Well the last the last right? sort of was when the was when the, the hall, was, hall done. was being, yeah. That was 15, 15. 16 years ago. Oh, almost 20. Like I know it's since I've been living in Randolph. So. Yeah. So it's. I, mean, I guess it could have been 20. I think it's close to 20. Could be. Because I've been on almost 13 years. And it was before me by a little bit. But yeah, it was a while ago. And it got another good slug of years out of it. But. Yeah. I think it is time to let it go. 
just totally hollow inside. And hope to need it to dispose of power you bought them. Just going to be living in it at one point. <laughs> Do you need a boat to cover you? It wouldn't hurt. <laughs> then I can blame it on you. So it actually worked out for me. Now I think about it. I'll go down with you, but I just don't know that. All right, Laura, so don't you miss this one? But he wants us with him. Sure. <laughs> hey, you know, me and Ben Franklin, we hang together or we hang separate. I will make the motion to allow Trevor. <laughs> to, 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 to order no, Trevor. Hey, <laughs> hey, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna order Trevor. He has no choice. <laughs> but to contract with the appropriate tree mo removal service to take down this hazardous tree. Wow, that was a good notion. I'll second that. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, and now we're going to go back up to item two, which is public comment. So we have one that was a late arrival. Right? Yeah, it's just that there's public comment. If you're not, that's okay too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, executive session. This is a two motion one. What are the motions, Trevor? <clears throat> well, if you were so inclined. <laughs> They're in your. You can consider a motion to find that executive session is necessary and prudent, and that premature general public knowledge will place the town at a disadvantage. So moved. Second. You knew that was coming. Yep. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? And if you were inclined to enter now that you found that it's necessary and prudent, you could consider a motion to enter executive session pursuant to one VSA section 313A1A contracts. 313A1B, collective bargaining, and 313A3, personnel. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Are we invited guests? With invited guests. We're done. You can come off.